What is a fact that can possibly save your life? Do not delay getting out of a burning building. The flames are not what will kill you. The smoke will get very thick and toxic very quickly and you will not be able to see the way to get out. Stay low and go, go, go. The oxygen is down near the floor. And don't think a handkerchief over your face will do anything. This obviously won't work all the time, but if someone grabs you by the arm, don't pull away, twist your arm instead. Your arm goes, nearly, all directions but their wrists won't. Maybe not your life, but someone else's. Most drowning is silent. The victim quite literally cannot speak to call for help, as they are too desperately trying to get any air at all. Drowning can look simply like a person bobbing in the water until they no longer come back up. Keep a watch out. Especially if it's kids. If you ever almost drown to the point of throwing up water or passing out, even if you feel 100% fine, get to a hospital. Your lungs can unwittingly self-fill up with fluid over the next few hours. Secondary drowning is no joke. More people definitely need to be aware of the dangers. If you are ever buried in rubble, earthquake, tornado, building collapse etc. don't shout. You'll lose your voice and waste energy. Instead, grab a piece of rubble and knock in patterns of threes. Humans are expert pattern makers and pattern notices. Rescuers will hear the distinctive pattern sound and go toward it. Once you can hear people, then use your voice. If you're visiting an unfamiliar location like a cinema or concert hall, take a few moments to look around for the nearest exit, then pick out a second as a backup in case the first becomes blocked or cut off. If something happens, especially in a crowded public place, most people's first instincts are to turn around and head for the main entrance but this is not always the closest, safest or easiest way out. Nine times out of ten there will usually be a closer exit. If you get kidnapped try to leave as much traces of yourself behind as you can. For example leave bits of clothing behind or scratch your arms a lot to leave dead skin behind. This way you increase your chances that a search dog could pick up your scent and find you. I watched a crime show once where the victim left her hair everywhere in her abductor's car. She kept pulling single strands of hair out. When she was taken to the house of the person who took her, she pulled more hair out, touched everything she could to leave fingerprints behind, and even licked multiple places in his house. She managed to escape and they found evidence of her all over his car and house. Slam shut case. There are no rules if a stranger puts their hands on you. Yell, scream bloody murder, kick, bite, make the biggest scene you possibly can and run away as fast as you can. Make sure your kids understand that this is the exception, the time they must draw as much attention as possible and do anything it takes to get away and get help. If your car goes into the water, open the door or roll down the windows immediately. If you don't, the pressure differential will hold them shut and you'll have to wait until the car fills up with water. On newer cars, the headrest poles can be used to break a window. I'm not sure if that's true, because headrests I've seen are just made of ordinary steel, and the ends aren't particularly pointy. A dedicated window breaker will have a sharp point made of an ultra-hard material. I read somewhere if a stranger gets in your car and tells you to take them somewhere or drive into something like a lamp post or anything. You won't be useful to them anymore because the car is damaged and you've drawn attention to them by crashing the car. You'll damage your car but you'll have your life and your bank account. Someone at my college did this a few years ago, the guy told him to drive to the bank and withdraw all his money so he drove into a lamp post and saved himself. When you're in Australia, mostly on beaches, do not touch the tiny adorable octopus with blue rings it's venomous and will usually kill you. In fact. Don't touch any snakes or spiders or marine life, a lot of it is poisonous, venomous or will kill you in other ways. Don't let this stop you from coming to Australia though, most of the humans are pretty nice. If you have an iPhone, pressing the lock screen button 5 times rapidly will initiate a call to emergency services. Handy for if you don't want to show you have a phone by removing it from your pocket. It will dial automatically. How to identify if you or someone else is having a stroke. Time is key so you need to act FASD facial drooping, a section of the face, usually only on one side, that is drooping and hard to move. This can be recognized by a crooked smile. Arm weakness, the inability to raise one's arm fully. 
speech difficulties, an inability or difficulty to understand or produce speech. Time, if any of the symptoms above are showing, time is of the essence, call the emergency services or go to the hospital. This one's pretty obvious, but if someone's grabbing you, it's usually easy to break the hold by grabbing their thumb. Can't hold shit so well without your thumb? I'm glad I haven't had the opportunity to use this next one, but I've been taught that if someone is trying to assault you or kidnap you, and you manage to get him on the ground, prop his leg up on something, knee cap facing upward, and ducking jump on that goddamn knee. Can't chase or kidnap you if he can't ducking walk. If stranded in the wilderness without food, do not eat mushrooms as a food source. 90% of them will kill you or make you violently ill. And some species of poisonous mushrooms imitate or look nearly indistinguishable from edible ones. So unless you are a mycologist, the fungus are not fun guys in a survival situation. Speaking with first-hand experience, North Korean border guards will search your belongings when you are going into the country. If you want to sneak something illegal in, example, South Korean movies, hide them in a pillow. At least that's how I managed to do it. Actually, just don't go to North Korea. Trust me. If you encounter a wild bear try to look as big as possible. Stand on the tips of your feet, raise your hands high up and look the bear straight into the eyes. Then start talking in a really deep voice, like really Darth Vader like. So deep, that nobody would even understand what are you saying. The bear will look at you for a while probably do some noises, in this case do not scream. You will scare the bear this way and he might attack but eventually the bear will leave. This is the only thing that works on bears. You cannot outrun them because they can run for much longer than you and unlike boars, they are very good tree climbers so don't try escaping on a tree. This doesn't work with grizzlies and polar bears though. Only with black bears and some brown ones. If you're driving and your accelerator pedal gets stuck in the down position, meaning your brakes won't work and you will only continue to increase speed, do not turn off the engine. Your steering wheel will lock up and you will very likely crash. Instead, turn on your hazards and shift into neutral to let your car gradually decrease in speed. If a tornado is standing still, it's probably coming towards you. Best get to a basement or shelter. If you are right in the open and very close to a tornado, lay down totally flat on the ground and protect your head, in theory this should create a vacuum seal. And if you are that close to a business end of a tornado, it's kinda your only shot. Might as well fully commit. If you were diving and something went wrong, or if you got stuck on a sinking boat or something, swim to the top as fast as you can while humming, or yelling. It'll keep your lungs from collapsing due to the underwater pressure. I'm not a diver, and I don't know any of the technical terms, but one of my uncles used to dive. Never happened to him, but he said it was advice worth remembering. Bear Survival Guide if it's black, make sure you aren't standing in between it and food slash its babies. If it's approaching you and you have made sure that you aren't stopping it from reaching food or its babies, make yourself seem bigger than you are, scream and make noises. Black bears are more cowardly than their brother brown and polar bears, so they get scared easily, so they try to avoid confrontation. If it's brown, sit in fetal position, play dead and hope it won't think of you as food, and to leave you alone, don't make yourself seem a threat. If it's white, you're ducked. If you're ever bitten by a wild animal out of the blue and it appears to be more aggressive than usual, like a raccoon, stray cat or dog, skunk, bat, or a fox, get yourself to a hospital to get possible rabies exposure treatment. Once you get rabies, it's pretty much game over. As soon as you're displaying symptoms, it has already reached your brain and there is essentially no chance of survival at this point. If someone is trying to kidnap you into a car do whatever it takes to not get in. If it means life or death to escape getting into the car then those odds are likely your best. If they say get in or you die, you don't listen and you do your best to get away. They are more likely to kill you once they've transported you to somewhere private rather than publicly on the road. Statistically once you enter the car you are more likely to die. If you take antidepressants, don't take cough suppressants. Cough suppressants increase the amount of serotonin in your brain, which is what antidepressants do too. If you have too much serotonin, you can get what's called serotonin syndrome. The more medication you've taken, the worse it could be, and can possibly be fatal. It's not fun, 
Trust me. I had to learn all this the hard way. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.